a go at changing the sway bar bushes on an SL. Now this particular SL here has actually had all of that done already. You can see these are the bushes here and also there's a set of bushes behind, D bushes behind here. But the observant amongst you will see that these have actually been put in upside down. That bolt should be at the bottom so that this here sticks upwards. Otherwise you're liable to catch that on something like a curb or something that you're driving over. So the first thing we're going to do on this particular car is just change these over and whip them around the other way. And change your sway bar bushes. My advice would be to treat yourself to a ratchet spanner. We bought this one on eBay for £4.99 and it's slightly different from others because it has a ratchet on both sides. One side is a 13 mil, which is what you'll need for the sway bar bushes. And the other side is a 12 mil. This is called a flex head ratchet spanner which is very very useful for doing that job you can also get fixed heads but normally ratchet spanners only come with a ratchet on one end and the other end will either be a fixed ring like that or an open spanner my advice would be to get a double headed ratchet spanner if you could find one that was flex and one that was fixed both 13 mil that would be perfect for me this one's 13 and 12 flex head on both sides absolutely ideal for doing um the sway bar bushes and at the end of this video i'm gonna just put a link into where you can get those sway bar bushes at half the price that you'll generally pay and maybe even a quarter of the price that you'd pay at mercedes a ratchet spanner this job becomes very quick and easy we should just be able to take this out without having to remove anything else okay, so just to recap you want the nut washer bushing sway bar bushing washer metal tube and then a washer and a bushing and a bushing and a washer and the bolt uh, the nut needs to be on top Job done when you want to tighten you just turn the spanner one way and if you want to loosen you just turn it the other way around let's go and do the other the one. simplest of tasks <laughs> this isn't at the right angle and hence that bolt is hitting that and not coming out which means we're going to have to jack the car up and drop this wheel down just have to jack up the car slightly to get the bolt out to get it back in basically the gap here is too little so we've just jacked up that bar slightly we're just going to tighten that bolt down a little bit when it comes to tightening this nut down i normally leave about an inch of thread here um but you'll find on your car it may look slightly different for example on this 280 sl here you can see that there's much much more thread you can also see that the bushings here are beginning to split and crack which is why we're going to replace them on this car one so tight that's all so rusted but this does not want to come out at all um, and quite difficult to try and bash it out so maybe we're going to have to get a blowtorch and maybe burn the rubber off the bottom or something five minute job is turning out to be a bit of a nightmare because this metal tube here is melded on to the washers and you're even trying to bash that out with a hammer, it will not come out. Um, I'm also gonna try taking this bar off first, see if I can get the bar off and maybe that'll give me a different angle. To changing these D bushes here, once again, you'll find a ratchet spanner is invaluable because sometimes you can't get a socket in that gap there. And um, it will save an awful lot of time just getting a ratchet spanner in and not having to take it out each time. Sway bar off, and what we'll do is we'll give this our usual treatment. We'll just sand off all of this old paint, stick this in a rust bath. Same with the brackets, de rust them, undercoat them, paint them, um, and then put it back on the car. We still need to, oops, we still need to get the old fittings out. I'm hoping that. Now the sway bar's gone, it'll be easier to get in there maybe, we'll soon find out. Seems like forever, going at that with a hacksaw, we've hopefully cut the, oh my lordy, there we go. Let's have a look at that outside. Now I'm at the heat, 
anything is ever going to get that off when it's that rusted. That is completely melded to there. So let's go and hack the other one off. If you are faced with really stubborn um, fittings that don't want to come off, if they're as rusted as these ones, I wouldn't waste your time with heat or anything like that. Just bend this out as far as you can get it. Wedge something in there so you've got an angle to get in there with a hacksaw. And uh, my advice would be to buy a new set of hacksaw blades because it's a really hard job being upside down trying to hack that off. Hard work to cut that off. Takes a long time to strip off all of this paint and get rid of all of this rust, but if you're gonna do a job, you might as well do it properly. You can save yourself a lot of um, rust removal if you kind of use milk bottles to do the end bits. We've got one on each end here. And just by tilting this up, we can make sure that those two brackets stay submerged. by bush brackets have come up nicely we stripped them back down to bare metal just given them a couple of coats of the eastwood um rust encapsulator we're just gonna give them a couple of coats of cheap gloss paint and uh, quite an awkward shape so we're just gonna hang up on a washing line with a piece of thread all the rust off this you can see how badly pitted this was um but we've got it back to bare metal and now it's time to just put some Rust encapsulator on there, stop it rusting again, and then we'll prime it and spray it with gloss. Coats of high build primer on there. On top of the rust encapsulator, you could now paint this with something like metal paint, hammerite. Just buy a tin of it and brush it on, but we're just gonna use um, some cheap and cheerful auto gloss to give that a couple of coats of black gloss. Part of this job was getting the old um, bushes off and painting up all the sway bar and brackets. Uh, we got this kit from the SL shop, but it is possible to get it for half the price from eBay. So I'll put the part number and where we got it from at the end of the video. Next up, we're going to just put this back together, which should only take a few minutes, hopefully. Let's just put a tiny smear of grease inside these because having just painted this, obviously the paint where these sit is likely to wear off, but we'll just make it a little bit easier to get them okay, on. To put this back together, especially if you're single-handedly, the easiest thing is to put these um, in first, just remember the order it goes bolt, washer, bushing, bushing, washer, tube, washer, and then we're just very loosely going to put that nut on. And then we're just going to move this up. We've done the same on the other side. We're just going to move this up, hopefully, behind these things here yeah, and line up the holes. Incredibly difficult to do with one person, but I'm going to give it a red hot go. Okay. Okay, we've just loosely got this bolt in. It really does help if you put some grease on here so you can slide these up to align them, especially if you're doing this job by yourself. So we've just got the bottom bolt in. I think we're just gonna see if we can tighten it up a little bit more and then get the top bolt lined up. Before, but these ratchet spanners in these really tight spaces where you're working awkwardly are really invaluable. It's really fiddly getting these two bolts in because you've got to get your hand right up inside there. Um, I started off by getting the bottom bolt in just to sort of centre the whole thing up, but in actual fact, I think it's easier to get the top bolt in and then put the bottom bolt in afterwards. Um, it's important when you put this bushing in, there's a metal ridge just here. You've got to make sure the bushing is on the other side of that metal ridge. So these ridges here basically center the bushing. Once you've got the top one in, I'm hoping to get the bottom bolt in. It should be easy peasy. When you do finally get these bolts lined up, rather than just tightening up one all the way and then tightening up the other one all the way, it's a good idea to tighten one up a little bit, then the other one up a little bit. So you're pulling this D bracket on evenly, otherwise you're liable to twist it and whisk stripping some of these threads. Tighten this down, there's uh, not as much thread showing as there was before, but this is nice and tight. You don't want to overdo it and over compress these bushings. And um, we've got the bolts both lined up, tightened up. When um, this D bracket came off, it actually had an additional nut on it. In fact, what they had done is they'd put the, they'd screwed the, uh, bolt in this way and put a nut on this side which is 
considerably easier because then you've actually got the bolt to screw the nut onto. If you're just doing it with a bolt, so when you buy the new kit, you're just gonna get this bolt here. Um, if you're trying to do that and line it up with those holes, it is very difficult, but that's the way it's supposed to be. So the bolt's supposed to go in this way. Um, you could, if you wanted to, if you were worried about this coming undone, put an extra nut on there, but there is a spring washer on those bolts, so it shouldn't come undone. Um, so that's it, sway bar bushes, um, definitely a job you can do yourself. Part number for that um, bush kit is 107. 320047. We got asked from the SL shop, paid $29.95, including postage and VAT. You can basically get the same item from a company called Ace Parts for about £12.50 on eBay. And with the money you save, buy yourself a nice ratchet spanner.